And one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Corgi Town USA podcast. I'm Candy. This is Chuckles, the spokes cork for Corgi Town USA. This is Catherine, our executive producer, and Digby, the chair of the Corgi Committee. And we actually have guests here in the studio yes, tonight. And, and, and apparently, when you come in studio, there's cookies. There's, yeah. Good cookies at that. Yeah, right. Hey, we had we needed sugar to keep us going. Man. That's right. That's right. So tonight we have the adorable Tank. So everyone meet Tank. This is my new boyfriend. He's like the cutest boyfriend ever. Are you so jealous? Oh, I'm sorry. Some people are listening. If you're listening and not watching, Tank is absolutely a heart stealer. And then we have Robert, his dad. So thank you for joining us tonight. Of course. It's a pleasure. So we do, uh, we're going to go a little off the cuff tonight. We have some questions about Tank, and um, but we like to give the viewers some information on kind of like traveling with your Corgi, um, and a lot of it is how a Corgi changed your life. Yes. And so I kind of, I tell a lot of the same stories because, you know, I have the same stories, but, um, but of course what I've learned, the biggest thing I've learned from having Corgis is that I can't be without one. Like I'm always going to have to have corgis and so um when we were just talking about lilo my first corgi who passed away two years ago today uh he was 15 we had 15 beautiful years together um and i have other rescues as well and before lilo passed away i wanted to get another one and raise him from a pup so i got chuckles here so chucky's just now two and i wanted to have him and i did get to overlap them for a few months digby's getting surly over there oh too much <laughs> child so, uh, but I wanted him to, to learn from the best dog in the world. And then of course, Digby found me and yes. then, um, and then Digby found me and then Digby found cat. And we talk about how healing Digby is for cat being a grieving widow. That's right. Yeah. So, so tell us, you're here tonight to tell us all about tank. And then I have some questions for you. Um, you know, we, we go over again, you know, how Corgi's change your life. And I always say this, like there are these constants, um, things I've learned from corgis are patience may be a virtue, but it's not a requirement. And every day is an adventure, no matter what you're doing. Love much, sleep often, zoom and frap whenever possible, and be the most loyal friend you can be. So as cheesy as that sounds, and it is cheesy, but I like cheese. So. <laughs> Um, what did you say about cheese the other day? That's proof that God okay, loves yes. us. Yes, cheese is in fact proof that God loves us. Oh, Tank. Tank's getting surly now. Tank, don't get surly. Don't leave me. I love you. So for those listening, not watching, I'm sorry that you're missing this. You're going to have to meander over to our YouTube channel so you can see this just adorable loaf. He is just absolute. I mean, I'm in love with him. I'm head over heels in love with him. Whatever you want, Tank. Whatever you want. You got it. I'll do it for you. You want Tritos. You want Snuggies. All of it. You can have all of it. So it, Robert and it's Falk, right? Robert yes. Falk. Yes. So thank you so much tonight. Um, this is Tank of Falk's Finest Corgis. Yes. You're the Corgi dad. I am the Corgi dad. And we love Tank. He is so handsome and so majestic. We were talking about, we were talking a little bit about conformation. Um, in, in the show circuit, they have this thing. Lilo's parents were show dogs. And they have this thing called conformation. And it's just kind of the build, the stature. And, you know, Chucky's kind of on the small side. He's a little bit of a petite little dude. And Digby's very long, kind of lanky, really, for a corgi. Yeah. Um, but Tank has this very, like, very full, majestic chest floof. He's got a very proud chest. I mean, he's he's very, very conformed. His good conformation. Thank you. <laughs> um, I would guess, uh, I'd say all the credit goes to his dad's side of the pedigree. Um, his dad's from Ukraine, like I mentioned. Uh, he comes from the Leif Spring Kennel, oh. the Leif Spring Kennel, <laughs> which is uh, actually a Russian kennel. But, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, wow. But um, the son of Leif Spring, like fan fan tool pan, um, he's a Russian and Ukrainian champion. Um, his son <laughs> is this guy's dad, and um, he looks exactly like him. It's pretty crazy. Uh, he does have a very distinctive European build. Compared to Americans, you can see the difference, and he kind of looks like a boat. 
I'd say when he walks around, he struts it. He says everything with his chest. Yeah. And, and he's low uh, to the ground like a tank. Yes. He's very low to the ground. He wobbles like a penguin and he says it like a tank. So, <laughs> yeah. Know. I love the way his little frappy he does when they were chasing each other in the kitchen. Like, it's just, I mean, I could sit there for hours and just watch him frap around. Yes. It's mesmerizing. I could have named him Flip Flop. I really could have. So, <laughs> could you flip flop. So and he's a black headed try. Or? Yes, he yeah. actually uh, he has a black cap. Um, he's a red headed try. Uh, his redhead. grandpa red does head. have okay. the uh, red head. Um, same with the black cap. His dad actually has a full red head. Okay, um, yeah. So it was pretty weird because the mom is full red and yeah, dad has red head. So we weren't expecting the black cap, but black cap happened, and it all happens for a reason. You turned um, out perfect. Yeah, I've, it's... I've been told. So Chucky's what they call a factored black headed try, which means that they still have the black cap on them, but it's not, you know, it's not a, all a full mask. So he still has the black. So yes. I would say he's he's probably almost a factored, yes. but his colors, he's only six months old. So his no, colors are going to change a little bit. Yes, he he'll still probably little, he still has a little bit to change. Yes, he'll probably grow out of this black a little bit more. Yes, I'm, I'm not sure, but I've been told with black headed tries that if they have the black on the inside tips of their ears when they're puppies, that yeah. they will actually keep their full mask. Mm -hmm. He's a red headed try, but he's going to have still this black cap. Um, if you could see the back of his head yeah. where it's going to stay a little bit dark like that. Yeah. Um, my previous Corgi had the same head and, uh, they both turned colors drastically, but yeah. it still stays a little bit kind of like a German shepherd ass kind of blend. Yeah. So. Yeah. Shoot. I love, I love the, um, the, the German shepherd look on yes. little Corgi's face. Yes. Faces. They really oh. do pull that off sometimes. Uh, I've heard, had plenty of people say it looks so much like a German shepherd sometimes. And yep. yeah. You do. You have a beautiful little face. Well, again, for those listening, we hope that you find your way to our YouTube page so that you can see this beautiful boy. Um, but we're just we're going to talk about Tank and talk about you told us about him being Ukrainian. Yes. And um, so that's so it's a fancy pedigree. Yes, yeah, so it's a pretty pedigree? fancy pedigree. Um, after uh, doing a lot of research uh, into Pembroke Corgis and I kind of peeked on the other side of the pond and I fell in love with their confirmation and, and just how they stand, how they walk and everything about it. And I knew, okay, that's what I want. And that's what I got. And, uh, Digby's yeah. taunting him. Dig yeah. Digby's down on the ground so taunting him. We have, you, you can, you can put him down if you want to let yeah, him play. I'll yeah. Go, He's <laughs> we're going to, we have some bitey face action here in the Get studio. So we got to let him play. I I've, Ever since pup Chucky was a puppy, I would pick him up and I would make him sit, like I would carry him around. And a lot of that was just to keep him out of trouble because he's one of the most curious corgis I've ever had. So I've actually conditioned him to that. So this that you see here, he does get wiggly, but that's why he's so good with this is because I would just force him. When he was a puppy, wiggle. Nope, you're sitting right here, buddy. <laughs> so, But it took took a lot of work. <laughs> he's a headstrong one. They can be trained. It takes a lot to train it them. It does. It does take a lot. Yes, a lot of consistency. So since, as we're talking about this, um, you had a corgi before uh, named Dutch. Yes. And poor Dutch crossed the rainbow bridge, um, unfortunately, much earlier than we, than you anticipated. And I'm so, so sorry. Yes. We loved, we loved little Dutch. Dutch was awesome. But uh, like I say, everything does happen for a reason. He wasn't, I'd say my first corgi um, oh really yes uh i grew up uh breeding hunting labrador retrievers etc so i grew up with about 10 to 15 adult dogs at a time and we had a couple select dogs that would always stay up in the yard and we did have a kennel out in the pasture and we took care of them as well but um we had two corgis we had two reds uh dallas and Corey, oh. and that was my first introduction kind of in my childhood and were they 40s. working dogs um no they were just kind of house dogs uh, yeah. pet family dogs and um we got them at a barrel race that's where my sister was a, big a barrel, barrel race. race yes my sis i did rodeo i didn't personally do it i was pretty much uh, my sister's cheerleader my nice. whole childhood and yeah went all their barrel races and that's where um there was someone selling corgis at the time and at the time we paid 350 dollars for a corgi puppy yeah and i wish you could pay that now i know right yeah lilo uh so i got Again, I'm going to date myself. I keep doing this every episode talking about how my age. Yes, you're uh, so old. Well, I mean, I'm feeling that way lately. But uh, but I got Lilo in 2004. 
And again, his parent he was a he was a pedigree. His parents were show dogs. If we lose camera or audio, it's because we have corgis running around in the studio, and we're going to include this on our boopers reel or forget it. We'll just put it in the whole episode. <laughs> but yeah, Lilo, I think I paid four hundred and fifty dollars for, and that was you know that was premium. That's what yeah. you paid back then. But mm-hmm. but we also at that time. I think it was around, but it wasn't as well known. Um, we didn't know as much about genetic testing as we do now. Yes. So back then we didn't know as much about DM, uh, VWD, Von Willebrand disease, mm-hmm. um, hips, eyes, things like that. Hips and eyes were are kind of kind of been common for a while. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, Lilo had pretty strong hips, thank goodness. But uh, but the the things with the the DM and all that that that's a little bit newer that we're finding out that you can prevent that and we actually have a whole episode of that coming up um, where we talk to some experts about DM and and how it's prevented um, in breeding and what to look for with breeders so um, pretty interesting are they eating anything they're not supposed no to no they, they they're with the toys <laughs> don't worry about it I okay. I am the executive producer <laughs> and apparently the uh, babysitter as well. <laughs> When, when you say uh, all the differences in, uh, in the time, since the time's passed and genetic testing and all that, I take, or I look at the pictures of Corey and Dallas and I can see, we didn't get them at the same time, but mm-hmm. you can see the distinct difference in pedigree and, yeah. and the Corgi and Corey was much more of a cowboy Corey you know, or Corgi yeah. um, and uh, not pretty athletic, pretty lean, not really of a fluffy coat. And Dallas was much more regal, had a chest, was fluffy. Was Some of that conformation. Yes, he had yeah. an actual corgi body. Um, but yeah, that's uh, those led into Dutch. Dutch, uh, I got him when I was 27. And that's where um, I made the real decision in saying, I want to breed corgis. That's where um, follow my real passions and say, okay, I chose Dutch as my star stud of my future kennel, Falk's Finest Corgis at the time. And um, that's where uh, I was raising him and everything to be that. And Mm -hmm. right before he was able to really start studying out, um, he got valley fever. And it was a pretty rare case of it. And uh, he didn't make it. And oh, so sad. I'm yeah, so sorry. Sad. but hey, that happened mm-hmm. last uh, last year, and he passed in July. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. And now, how we say uh, touched on how Corgi's changed lives. Dutch truly did change my life. Um, he showed unconditional love, gave me a best friend when I was an independent contractor doing my own business. He gave me company. He was always there when I needed him. You had a sidekick. He was my sidekick. He was my best buddy. He was oh. like a, a little brother to me and not even like a child. He's like a little brother. It's pretty crazy. But uh, that's where after that, um, I was pretty lost. I said, oh, my goodness, I don't have a corgi or anything anymore. So being at home alone was a little difficult. But then yeah. uh, I didn't rush into it. That's where I knew I needed another corgi ASAP. But I couldn't um, jump the gun or anything. So I had to be methodical. And that's where, like I said, everything happens for a reason. I always thought Dutch was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. You know, I thought he was a really good looking dog. And then I thought I did meticulous research. And then I saw the other side of that pond, like I mentioned. And um, I got a whole different breed, same breed, different animal. You yeah. know, that's how I feel. Well, and you have to travel. And that, that's kind of often yes. um, because the the really good breeders that do the genetic testing and and we'll we'll explore that more on this podcast yes. and other episodes, but but kind of what to look for. Of course, we're we are very pro rescue here. I Absolutely. rescued for if you can rescue, we definitely recommend that. Um, and there are some resources that we can direct you to if you contact us. But um, if you can, please rescue. Uh, but I'm I'm not one of those adopt don't shop solely. I, I definitely believe if you can, please adopt first because there are always shelter dogs that need homes. Absolutely. And if you like corgis, there are always corgis that need adopted as well. You'd be surprised and definitely cowboy corgis and corgi mixes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we are always glad to educate you about the health of the breed. So things to look out for in ways you can manage certain conditions you get from things like overbreeding and, and backyard breeders. But with the popularity of the breed, that's kind of one of the things that happens when more and more people start liking corgis as they should because they're adorable and lovable. And who doesn't love a corgi? And there's the crown. There's the, the show, crown. The Crown. Which and, I only watch for the corgis. Right. And, but that <laughs> that's how people, they're like, oh, that's like the queen's that's dog. The yeah, queen's it's like dog. The queen's dog. Yes. I hear that probably once a week. Yep. <laughs> well, yep. I mean, I'm royalty. <laughs> you're, you're a princess and it's a whole different episode. I am queen. <laughs> this princess nonsense you talk about. I am the queen. <laughs> well, what do you, would you say that you've learned from having corgis um, from Dutch and Tank? 
Ooh, um, learning how to let go. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, that's a good point. Um, I've had parts where, yeah, we all like to make choices out of anger. And when dogs make mistakes, you can't make the choices out of anger. You got to take a breath, um, make a educated, conscious choice of the matter and make sure they made a mistake, but do not scar their mind for it. And Positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. Absolutely. That's not, where, not punitive. Yeah. Um, I will be honest, um, brutally honest, and I actually feel um, I'm part of myself, but I feel like to an extent with Dutch where I, there were times where I feel like I crossed that line and that's where with Tank, I knew not to do that. And that's where we have a better bond. I feel we're, we're pretty close over it. I wouldn't say a better bond, but um, we don't have that doubt of trust anymore. Right. There's never like a, Hey, that was a little bit too much of a punishment because you never want to be too, too no. hard. And that's no. where with the previous dogs and experiences, it can, it can change. Them. Yeah. So, and the, and I applaud your honesty, Yeah, uh, but I will back you up here and say, it's kind of like the same thing with breeders when it comes to things like discipline and teaching. Um, you know, that's old school mentality. Every dog's different. And well, yes, but you, it, that is, that is, is old school, school mentality. mentality. And people that grow up on farms and things, that's, that's the alpha beta Yes, that you are alpha and that you, it, which you do want to establish yourself as alpha. Mm -hmm. Excuse you, Tucky. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, it, it's positive reinforcement. Yes. Um, and, but that, that's kind of been a newer, newer age way of doing it. It's much better, but it's, that's yeah. something we've learned. It's over difficult. Time. It's very difficult, but it after, does take patience. Yeah. It takes right. a lot of patience. And that's where, after the experiences I had with Dutch, me and Dutch were like this. Don't ever get me wrong. You know, I would of die course. for him. He died for me. Same thing. They're, they're but, loyal uh, no matter what. Yes. That's right. uh, and that's where, but I knew now, um, what the mistakes that I've made, what not to make. And it actually, I see the results. That's where, that's what I meant to say is pretty much, I, I see the benefits of how much more you can get out of your dog. Yeah. Being calm and positive and Booger, my girl, she hammers a rescue as well. Hammer has a different background, but Booger um, was in a terrible situation when I got her. Um, her teeth were black. She was underweight. She was riddled with fleas. Mm -hmm. um, they poked her outside and she wasn't potty trained, um, you know, but she's, just all these things, but she, I believe was abused as well. Mm, yeah. I don't think you get that nervous unless no, you've been, no, abused. and she's, she's a very nervous girl as, 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 you know, as opposed to, um, uh, to Digby who, uh, before you rescued Digby, um, he was with a very lovely couple that comments on everything on Facebook. So yeah. lovely people who just good people, um, good people who could not keep him yeah. at the time. And, and these things happen. And, uh, and, and so very loving parents and then and very made loving... the loving choice to rehome, which is a very, very hard decision. That is mm -hmm. such yeah. a, that is such a difficult very decision. Difficult. I could not Im even imagine. And, um, and then to your loving home and then here where, you know, whatever. It's part of, just part of the extended family now. Right. And, <laughs> and, uh, you can see the difference in that he is extremely friendly uh, he will go up to anyone. He uh, self-assured. He's a Digby. Yeah. Self-assured uh, to the point where he attempted to make friends with a coyote several months oh, ago. Friends. I thought he was barking at him. He was, bar but <laughs> he, he, he kind of had that look. I don't know if he was making friends or if he was trying to chase him off the property, but either way he was like after the coyote, <laughs> very self-assured, very play, very much. Play, 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 play. You want to play? You want to play with me? <laughs> But oh yeah, God. there's, there's a huge difference I can see in, in hammer and certainly in booger and chuckles and chuckles. Chuckles yeah. is Mr. My world. You all live in it. Right. <laughs> Little conquistador. That's what I call him. He's a yes. conquistador. So, um, have you traveled much with Tank? Um, we just went to Sedona last week. We actually have a huge road trip to Utah tomorrow. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Oh. We're going to be going up to, uh, American Fork. Going to be looking at some dinosaur bones, maybe to. Buy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. Is yeah. is there snow there right now? Um, yes, there's snow. It's I saw the uh temperature in Bryce was like ten degrees. Oh my goodness, yeah, Ew. super cold. Well, well, you'll have to keep us posted on if if Tank likes the snow. That's where I'm very <laughs> excited to introduce him to the snow. Yeah. Well, I'm going to share for our viewers. We have a little banner here 
um, follow Tank on Instagram. It's Falk's Finest Corgis. And for those listening, not watching, it's F-A-L-K-S, Finest, F-I-N-E-S-T, Corgi, C-O-R-G-I-S. So Falk's Finest Corgis, if you want to see Tank and you do want to see Tank. He is adorable. He is beyond adorable. I mean, yes. I'm just, I'm head over heels over here. I'm getting better with the pictures. I'm getting better. So I yeah. just got that camera. So I'm excited. Well, he, the camera kind of loves him though. I mean, he seems like yeah. a natural because he's just she, so pretty and such a good looking boy. I yeah. shouldn't say pretty. Majestic. He's handsome. majestic. He he's not pretty. He's handsome. Yes, he does. He's I love handsome. it. <laughs> yep. Digby's pretty. <laughs> Digby is not pretty. <laughs> My son is not pretty. My son is handsome. He's a lady killer. Please. Well, he likes his men too. He does like his boys. <laughs> My boy is bisexual and that's okay with me. That's I love okay. him just the same. We love everyone here. That's right. That's the corgi way. That's the corgi way. <laughs> All right. Well, I did have more questions. Let's see. So, okay. One of the things we talk about a lot here is the paparazzi. And what is the paparazzi? the paparazzi? You said that to me and I was like, I've never heard of this thing. So what is this? So, uh, you know, paparazzi, those yes. are the people that take care. So when you have corgis, you become famous because everywhere you go, you amass a fan club. Oh my gosh, it's a corgi. You have corgis, corgis, corgis. It's different. Now this makes sense. Yes. <laughs> so tell us about your paparazzi. Experience. Yes. Yes. Uh, Tank is a constant paparazzi. I, I would say, I guess, uh, every time I go to, uh, I go everywhere with him. So um, everywhere I go, pretty much everywhere, uh, everybody asks where I got him. Um, so I say I got him from Texas. You know, I flew over there and I drove back. And uh, they always ask how much. I I'm kind of reluctant to say because I'm kind of protective of the dog. And, you know, I don't want anybody taking my dog. So Well, there's that. And we also want to tell anyone listening or watching, please, if you do decide you want a corgi, again, try to rescue if you can. If you can't yeah. rescue, you want to do breeder, please do research. We're glad to give you some, some resources, at least on what to look for. Mm -hmm. um, I try to be careful about recommending certain breeders because... Right. I want the the owners to to uh, to decide themselves, but um, but please don't don't choose the dog based on price because there are breeders out there that don't have the best practices that charge no. just as much or more. Yes, and then there are really good breeders that just don't charge as much because they love the breed. Um, but there is a standard price, so uh, please don't please don't uh, choose the dog on on price. Yes. Uh, right. W the things that I always recommend when people say that you want a corgi and we'll do a segment on this. So you want a corgi. What do you look at? They shed a lot. They bark a lot. <laughs> they are high energy. They're very bossy. Um, you know, and those are all wonderful. We love them for those things. But if you're not used to that, I think if it's you have a lot, if you haven't had one, you need to, those are things that I think are good to know because that, that is one of the reasons that sometimes there are rescues because they are, they can be too much for some people. They can be. And with the right training, like you mentioned, it's, it's wonderful. Um, but you know, those resources and that education is important to know. So yes. I am losing my headphones and Chuckles is Knocking him Chuckles off. <laughs> is wanting to go down with it's, his it's, his friends. I'm not letting him. I'm mean. Yeah, you're a mean mommy. Such no. a mean mommy. Well, I just I'm a helicopter mom. I gotta hover over him and watch what he's doing. <laughs> so tell me, what is your favorite favorite thing about life with Tank? Oh, uh, I know that is such a tough question. Every day is something different with Tank. No Groundhog Days here. It is truly something different. Um. I guess my favorite thing is about him is watching him grow, I guess, being a doggy dad and having this doggy love that I have for dogs. But uh, he's corky. <laughs> he's a corky dude. He's a little softy. He is a true sweetheart, and he has no idea how good looking he is. Did <laughs> no idea. That's the best part. If he knew, oh, my goodness, world, watch out. But he's, he's not a pup assist like like Chucky. No. Chucky's yeah. like, I'm beautiful. And I he know just it. wants some sweet attention and he wants to give some kisses. You see it when he puts yes. those ears back. He, yes. he says, hey. I picked him up and he gets, I just picked yeah. him up. I didn't ask. He, I said, oh my goodness, it's Tank. And he just gave me all the kisses. That's probably my favorite part is that his personality, no, with he knowing lovely, he has no idea how, how cute and good looking he is. He has, he, no he has a very lovely personality. Yeah, he's truly just a sweetheart. He's he just is. He's beautiful nice. on the inside yes. out. He's yes. good dog. Yeah. So, so you were talking about kind of a little bit about your background and growing up with animals and that you, you, you have bred before. Yes. Um, so, you know, you have 
you have experience with creatures great and small. Yeah, so, so, so tell us a little bit about this and how that's kind of prepared you for training. Um, I grew up on kind of like a little ranch. Um, I grew up five and a half acres with seven horses, 15 dogs or so, adult dogs. So with when we had puppies, we have over 40, 30 dogs, you know? So wow. Um, yeah. I actually have to take a step back. Uh, we were kind of borderline backyard, but we were very serious with the competitions because it was back in the nineties. So, uh, the conditions of things, seeing how I, I was, that under, was a little bit more normal. Again, uh, that, that's part of this sort of revolution yeah. with, with pets and, and, and pet rearing. And, and I was under yeah. my dad's wing watching, um, I was hands on breeding dogs, uh, taking care of puppies, doing do claws. That's, it's hard work. Breeding. It's very difficult. It's really hard work. Um, and there's a lot you have to watch. So the whole process is so delicate. I grew up a little country and that's where I got my hands dirty and, uh, that's where the whole connection with the dog, I've always had it. That's where I know some people where you were mentioning that um, haven't had a Corgi before, or aren't used to dogs, got to do your research. I've always been used to it. So having to fathom the mentality of not ever knowing how to take care of a dog is very difficult for me. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, everybody um, is different. And uh, that's where I grew up with all those animals. I even had some turtles, had some cats. Uh, wow. Yeah, I Digby love has a turtle friend he plays with. A couple. Yeah, he he yeah, he has a, a male and or a female. Tortoises. Tor they are Sorry. Tor they are the uh, they they belong. Uh, they are the siblings of his uh, of his girlfriend Nee. His girlfriend is black a uh, is a black Labrador. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so his he he likes to hang out with his girlfriend. And in the backyard of my mm -hmm. dear friend Brian are two tortoises, and I forget the names of them, and they'll live for 150 years. And Digby runs around and, and chases the tortoises. That's awesome. Yeah. It's just, he's keeps tapping on the shell and trying to figure out what it is and what's going on. It, they're, they're cool. They're cool. They're funny, funny dogs. Yeah. They're, fun, they're funny, funny dogs. If um, anybody wants to look at, at C Digby and how distinctive he is, it's hashtag Digby the doof on Instagram and Facebook. That's D O O F D I G B Y Digby the doof hashtag Digby the doof. So there you can find him there. Yep. So, uh, I was pretty much under my dad's wing, seeing all the training, pretty much how to raise dogs, take care of them with the puppies, et cetera, the borderline routine. Um, but I was the one pretty much doing a lot of the work. He was, he was pointing and shooting me to go do all the errands. And that's where I'd be waking up at six in the morning, uh, prop five thirty six in the morning, going outside to scrape spray kennels, um, Wow. Do all the work, like clean kennels every day, feed all the dogs every day, go clean horse stalls at least three times a week. Um, that's, do the that's do, intense. do the consistency of a routine with with a with growing animals into a system. So I guess that's where I, I was already kind of raised that way into a system. So I kind of knew when um <gasps> a matter of time before we lost our, lost our lighting <laughs> tank is lights out oh my goodness tank goodness huh tanky <laughs> oh buddy no bloopers we're just gonna leave no it bloop, in no bloop. <laughs> little blackout little tank out the tank knocked <laughs> over the light we ordered we ordered some tank out that's what we did so uh, uh Pretty much um, doing all that dog stuff. That's where I pretty much got in the system and knew when my dad's uh, Labrador retrieving breeding was called Falk's Finest Retrievers. And oh, that's where... You're carrying on a tradition. Yes, here. I'm carrying on my dad's tradition yeah. because I truly feel even though I do look back and know how things are properly done, we did, we really did, did, we did things the best we pretty damn could. And I'm pretty proud of that. And... Um, yeah, so Falk's Finest Corgis is when I made the decision. I got Dutch, and then things happened, and now I got Tank, and Tank's six months old. And uh, next month in March, he has his first dog show. Um, Aw, you entered him? Uh, not uh, the deadline. I think they haven't even opened the registrations yet. Okay, what, and, well, and things have been a little strange with Yeah, with COVID and everything, yeah. yeah. But uh, the the second week of March, um, there's his first dog competition, and pending his results, uh, that's where uh, that's studying him out, um, starting Falk's finest corgi the real way, and, and having some really nice puppies. 
And okay. Well, and thank you for your honesty on yeah. what you've learned, but I love that you've applied all of those principles and what's important and uh, doing the research yeah. and the genetic testing and yes. all of that. Yes. And that's where uh, I made sure my dog is fully clear of everything. And that's where it, I had to invest, but I, I knew I, I want Falk's finest Corgi. So when people want a true, honest Corgi, I want them to go look my way. They, they really are the finest. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm change the banner. I can't. Banner is usually my job, but yeah. Well, we were we were uh, we were rickrolled there with the yeah <laughs> with the tank the tank delighting. So yes, for those listening, again, we we highly recommend that you follow Tank on Instagram. It's Falks Finest Corgis. F A L K S finest corgis and uh because you you definitely want to see them and we hope that you meander to our youtube page and also um follow us on instagram corgi underscore town underscore usa corgi town usa and uh, please check out our youtube page we're gonna sign off tonight because we have some surly corgis here that we are playing certainly do bitey face and knocking over all of our equipment so before we start a fire that's right. We're going to say goodnight. Thank you. Of Robert course. Falk. Thanks for having me. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Digby and Tank are out playing. And Chucky, yes, I'm about are. to put him down and let him join. And Kat Cohen, our executive producer. And I'm Candy at Corgi Town USA. We're here every Thursday ask, uh, answering your Corgi questions. So thanks, everyone. Have a great night and stay healthy out there. Thank you. Good night.